Hi everyone, this is Wayne Rivers at Performance Construction Advisors where we build better contractors. This week I want to talk about succession and exit by the numbers. This comes from a book by Abby Donnelly. This book came out in 2023. Abby is a fellow North Carolina resident introduced to us by uh, member Steve Stevens at Landmark Construction. Very impressive bio, 14 year veteran of Procter & Gamble. Uh, worked for Sandler sales training for a while and uh, graduated <clears throat> with a uh, Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics and a Master's Degree in Statistics. So she's overqualified compared to <laughs> those of us at PCA. Anyway, Abby has some <clears throat> stats in her book that are really... Uh, shocking might be the right word. I'm not exactly sure, but let me know what you think. Email me your comments and, and what your thoughts are, and we'll uh, maybe feature those in a future vlog. Oh, one more thing. Don't forget about boot camp. We've got boot camp coming up in Denver in September, so get your high potential people registered with Charlotte, and uh, she'll get you more information. All right, what about this is important to you? Well, succession is always a topic at our uh, peer group meetings, and you know, it's not just succession of the CEO or the CFO. You know, if you, suppose you've got a really super talented equipment operator or you've got an estimator that just seems to get more done than anybody else. You've got to be thinking about succession throughout the organization. Construction, as we always say, is a people business. And you've got to, if you've got talented people, and by gosh, I hope you do, then you've got to replace them with other talented people at some point or augment them or whatever, call it whatever you want. But you've got to be thinking about succession all the time. 86%, um, according to Abby, 86% of people say succession planning is important or urgent, but only 13% believe they're doing it well. I saw that. I was like, well, that's a pretty big disconnect. If only 13% believe they're doing it well, why are they not looking for additional resources or additional help or additional information or something? I mean, if you you know you know you're not doing something well, why would you not strive to improve it? I, I don't know. Okay, um, second thing that jumped out at me: seventy four percent of senior leaders say they have a clearly communicated plan in place for succession, <laughs> but seventy eight percent of successors report there isn't one. <laughs> Again, a pretty huge disconnect. I mean, that's that just that just strikes you right in the face of senior leaders who are 61 years old or older, who wish to retire within five years, 55% have not chosen a successor. Now, I might quibble with that a little bit. I don't think it's entirely up to the departing leader to choose to anoint a successor. I think that process is better done bubbling up from the bottom, from below. You know, if, if I decide that, that, that John Doe or Jane Doe is going to be my successor, where's my guarantee that the other people in the organization are going to follow that person as the newly anointed leader. I think that needs to be an organic process instead of just a top-down, hey, I pick you kind of a process. All right, 89% of business owners say their family members, this is for family businesses, 89% say their family members are not interested in running the business. And 80% of millennials, according to Abby, would rather have cash from sale proceeds. Well, of course they would. Why wouldn't they? Uh, you're running a business, running a construction business is insanely hard. It's incredibly hard. So if I'm a potential inheritor, why wouldn't I just want a, a bundle of cash? I can take that to someone to manage that cash. And, and, and my weekly effort isn't 60, 70, 80 hours. My weekly effort might be you know, 60 minutes at the most. Much, much easier to do. 76% of CEOs say they do not have someone ready to take their places. However, <laughs> over 70% of next generation potential leaders believe they are ready. So another big, big disconnect. I think the 74% of senior leaders reporting a clearly communicated plan, 78% say there's not one, 76% say they, have, they don't have someone, 70% say I'm the person or we're the people. To me, these disconnected statistics belie a lack of clear communication, a lack of transparency in the organizations. Whether family business or not, your talented people want to know where's the company going to be in five years? Because to them, it's important to know where they are going to be in five years. Am I going to have a chance to grow and prosper in this organization? Or are we going to stagnate 
because senior leadership isn't thinking through what do we need to look like five years from now, 10 years from now as an organization in order to continue to prosper. So uh, I think the best question that I read in Abby's book is as follows. Let me make sure I get this right. How does the next generation CEO need to be different from even the most successful predecessor? You know, we talked ages ago about um, Marshall uh, Goldsmith's book, What Got You Here Won't Get You There. And I believe that. If you look at construction companies of today, 2025, and you compare them to, say, 2019, five, six short years ago, they're different. Your people are different. Your software is different. Your methods, your delivery methods are different. Something, maybe a lot of things are different. In five or six additional years, things will need to be different still. So what does the next generation CEO need to be different from even the most successful predecessors? A really great thought-provoking question. I recommend Abby's book. Pick it up. See what you think. Let me know. Uh, send me an email and don't forget about boot camp. This is Wayne Rivers at Performance Construction Advisors where we build better contractors.